I will now show you how the Lurgix 3D printer can be upgraded for direct extrusion. First, we need to print out a new fan cover for print head. The SDL of the fan cover can be downloaded from the Lurge official website. And then, get the direct extruder ready in advance. We will introduce its detailed assembly method in the next video so that you can assemble it back if you take it apart. First assemble the direct extruder onto the new fan cover. Well, we've done preparatory work. Put this fan cover and extruder combination aside. Next, we are going to disassemble the original print head matched with the remote extruder. First, remove the belt fixing block on the x-axis. Then loosen the adjusting knob of the belt and pull out the block. And then we take this one off the side. There is only one screw in it. And if you take that screw out, you can take it out. Collect the removed screws well, do not lose them, so as not to put them back later. So we can just take it off like this. The other belt fixing block should also be removed from it. Remember to keep the screws after you remove them. In this way, we can remove the slider of the entire x-axis print head. And then, we pull out the feed tube. Lower it a little bit for easy observation. Cut off the cable tie that holds the cables. And unplug the cable terminals. Now the whole print head is taken down, put the printer aside, it will not be used for the time being. Next, we start to disassemble the print head. First remove the fan. Side fan for heat break. Okay, cut the cable ties here after removing the fan. Pull out this nylon braided tube. Now we can take the fan out. Okay, we took out the fan. And then we remove the old print head cover. So far, we can pull out this cover of the print head. Pull the cables out of the old cover in turn. Now, the old cover is removed, we put the it aside. We now take the feeding tube off the print head firstly. Put the removed feeding tube aside, and then remove the red connector on the original heat sink of the print head. We don't need this connector when using direct extruder. Be sure to store the small screw if it is unscrewed. Don't lose it, because it will be used later. Next, we remove the heat sink of the print head. And be careful not to lose the screws on it. Now it'll be much easier for us to install this x-axis slider. Align the slider with the cover and fasten them together with the three screws we just removed.
Alright, so when it's fixed, it looks like this. Next, we're going to attach the heat sink we just removed to the slider. It needs a little skill. First, let's put the two screws that fix it in such a position. Where there are not any screws sticking out of this side. The screws can stick out this side. When assembling, pay attention that this screw hole should face the outside. So that we can operate it more convenient. Adjust the screw position again, so that the screw does not stick out of this side. Then put it in the cover. The hole here matches the white tube inside. Put it in, and press it to the end. Then use a screwdriver to fasten the two screws inside. Then take out the small screw on the heat sink we just removed. Put it back in, and lock it tightly. Okay, now the print head, new cover and x-axis slider are fixed together. So far, the direct extruder is 80% assembled. Then we put the fan back on it. First install the small fan on the side. Use the screws you just removed to fit back into the original position. Note that the two short self-tapping screws are used for the side fan and the longer screws are used for the front turbo fan. After it is installed here, we will first thread the cables on the print head and this cable of turbo fan into the nylon braided tube. It's relatively easy to thread these four cables into the braided tube, because it's flexible. There are several advantages to threading the cables into the braided tube. First, the cables are not messy, and second, the braided tube has a protection for these cables. Thirdly, during the printing, it will not cause some poor contact due to cables running around, or cause wrong layer, because the cables are hung up. So you guys are advised to be patient and thread it inside the braided tube. After we are done threading, we can put this turbo fan back on it. But before that, we need to fix the cables first. Scroll down the braided tube. Then we put a cable tie into it through this hole. And then the cable tie will come out from the other side. Like this. Then, we need to tie the cables to this position. Swipe it, let the cable tie fasten to the braided tube. Do not tie only the cable, but not the braided tube like this. Fasten to the braided tube, then tie it tight at this point. This is perfect. Cut off excess cable ties. Adjust this cable tie connector to the side so that it does not obstruct the turbo fan that will be installed next. Put the fan cable into this slot, otherwise it may hit the fan after assembly. After the fan is installed it should look like this. Fasten the fan with screws. Okay, so now we have assembled the entire new print thread. Organize cables. We put the new print thread back on the Lurgix 3D printer. Note that the print head should slide into the X-axis cantilever against this belt. Don't drop the belt outside, it's wrong. Make sure that when the print head slides in, 
The pulley is in the profile groove, and the belt is pressed underneath. Then we put the prints on the side back. Rotate the screw to raise the cantilever so that the belt block can be seen. And fit the belt block back. Then put the tension adjustment knob of the belt back on it. Then adjust the belt to the proper tightness by turning the knob. At this time, we have entailed the direct extruder. Finally, we put the feed tube back on. One end connected to the input of the direct extruder. And the other end, we can change the existing extruder to a feed guide. So how do we do that? Let's dismantle the original extruder first. Take out the inner handle of extruder in the spring. Save them well after taking it out. Next, we remove the extrusion gear on the motor. Keep it with the handle of extruder for future use. Now let's put the extruder back on. After the installation is completed, we insert the other end of the feeding tube to the top of the extruder. Then plug in the cable of the filament rinout sensor on the extruder. In this way, I also feed filament from the same position. Then the filament rinout sensor on this extruder can still be used, but the printer is using direct extruder so I can print TPU and other soft filament. We have completed the mechanical assembly part of direct extruder. Now let's talk a little bit about wiring. We can see there are four cables on this print head. The white cable is the thermistor. It should be connected with the white cable here. There's a white cable here. It is very easy to distinguish, the white cable and the white cable are connected. Among the other three cables, there is a slightly thicker white cable with black stripes. This is the cable of the heating tube, and it should be connected to the red-black cable. Okay, that's good. The remaining two cables correspond to the two fans. In older version, the fan wire terminals were white, color-coded like in the video, blue marking on one terminal and green marking on the other terminal. In new version, one of the two terminals is a green terminal and the other is a blue terminal. So you just connect the green terminal or the white terminal marked green to the green-black cable. There is a little trick when wiring. Let's not directly hold this terminal to plug this terminal on the other side. Which easily cause the silver interface shrapnel inside to be bitten and bulge out a bit. In this case it might cause the poor contact. After connecting this terminal, we need to pinch the end of the cable and push the cable inside. You can see the silver shrapnel being pushed in. That way, you will get a more stable state. This is some small problems that may be encountered during the wiring process. Say it back, connect the blue terminal or the one marked blue to the blue-black cable. Just like before, connect the terminal, pinch the cable and push the it inside again, so as to ensure the stability of the interface. This is how the two fans, the heater rod and the thermistor on the print head were wired. 
When it's done, we're going to tie the cables on this position. Remember to tie the braided tube together, which is the best. The last thing is to connect the motor of the direct extruder. Find a motor cable with a suitable length. Connect one end of it to the motor interface of the direct extruder. Put it through here. And connect the other end to the cable on the original motor. So far, we have completed the retrofit of the direct extruder. Next, we can print TPU and other flexible filaments. That is great, 